If I was going to perfect a specialita, here's how I might go about it. By making it dose by weight rather than time, and by reducing retention, enlarging the adjustment knob, and improving the portafilter rest. Meanwhile, there are things I would never change, like the motor, the burrs, and the user interface. And this unit here ticks all of those boxes. It's called the Libra, and I've been using it for a couple of months, during which time it has become my favorite. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. You have the familiar touch screen that's bright, clear, and simple. You can change your target weight with a touch. It remembers until you change it again. You can also grind manually if you like, using the interface as an on-off switch. You can calibrate it easily with any known weight. You don't need anything special. Coins work fine. I really like the clarity and simplicity of this interface. I've put about three kilos of coffee through this grinder and I find it to be accurate and consistent. Dialing in is a bit easier than with the spec because the grind adjustment knob is bigger, although the markings are less visible. The workflow is excellent. There's no penalty for locating it on the left or right of the coffee machine. I'm right-handed, so I keep the portafilter in my left hand and do everything else with my right. I like using the funnel, which is supplied as part of the package. The coffee lands lightly and piles up off-center at roughly 6 o'clock. Let's pause for a moment and look closely. Really fluffy grounds there. All it needs is a little shake, and that looks just fine. Ignore the clumps. They're mostly air, not coffee. They're formed by static charge and are about as dense as dryer lint. Just a quick tamp and you're off. Every closed bottom portafilter I've used has worked perfectly both with and without the funnel. I have had trouble filling my bottomless portafilter though. It never felt properly seated, and even when I got it to rest, it would wander when I started the machine. I notified Eureka and they sent me some video of filling a couple of different bottomless filters, and they had no problem. So maybe mine is a bit odd. I'll test that in a follow-up video. There is retention, but not in the pathway outside the grind chamber. I've used this all day and let it sit for a good 15 minutes for any static charge to dissipate. I rock it back and let it fall forward suddenly. And there's my full day's worth of retained coffee. Only the Fiorenzato All Ground and the Barazza Vario W Plus are this good. Let's look inside. I haven't cleaned this machine yet. I'm actually opening it for the first time here on camera. So, yes, we have retention inside the grind chamber, and you might make a habit of sacrificing three or four grams first thing in the morning. I'm going to vacuum around here, and we'll continue. The front panel is held with two Allen screws now, and a small key is included. If the knob is in your way, just unscrew it, and it will come away completely. The chute and elephant's trunk have been redesigned slightly for much better sealing and noticeably less friction. Look at how clean it is outside the grind chamber. This is why you get very high dosing accuracy and consistency. We have the same 55mm burrs used in the Specialita with 16 small breakers. These produce relatively fewer fines than some espresso grinders, creating a somewhat cleaner flavor profile that a lot of people like. I'm definitely a fan. Factory burr alignment is very good. Judging by feel, I'd say it's out of parallel by a half a thousandth or one twentieth of a millimeter. I'm not going to shim this. Definitely not worth the effort. Run out on the motor shaft and lower burr, that is total measured run out, is again negligible. 
Now I'd like to show you the dosing or weighing mechanism in load cell. We'll have to go in through the bottom. The first thing I notice is that this lower chamber is immaculately clean after grinding three kilos of coffee. However, there appears to have been some damage to a couple of components, possibly during shipment. So unfortunately, I'm going to pause here. I don't want to go forward unless I can put this all back together properly. I contacted Eureka and they're sending replacement parts. Once I've got them, we can continue exploring, after which I'll do the repairs on camera. I will also try a different bottomless portafilter to see if my ECM slash Profitech one is an outlier. Well, that's all for now. Next time, we'll conclude our discussion of portafilter baskets and shower screens. And then I'll probably do another five minute tips and tricks video like the one about filling your portafilter by volume. So keep in touch. Cheers.